the J Street cockpit is uh, quite nice and, and neat if you can see here with me. Um, it comes out standard with leather, carbon seat back, the brake is uh, integrated in the stick. And then we also have a trim system on the left hand side, the buck wipers also integrated here. Uh, the electrical product system here, operated electrically. And we'll show you now the next ones, if you look there, the buck wipers all integrated automatically um, functioning with automatic and manual modes. As you can see, some of the pilots are really selecting uh, fancy color schemes. This is a glider of one of our French customers, and uh, we really like a little bit of African color scheme as well, with a nice panel, Alex 9000 panel, with the jet installed. Some of your customers who has not flown with a jet just ask how difficult is it to operate a jet? Well, it's fairly simple. So basically we have a fuel emergency shutoff valve that could always be open in case of, of, of um, a fire. So that should be always in the open position and then you just select the, the battery there, you switch on the system and now the system is firing up. It takes about 10 seconds or so to, to initiate. So in case you get low, you can already fire up the system. And then it's just one button. You just push this button from retract to run and the whole process is initiating. Now the process is extending and um, extended and now the run up sequence is starting. So I have to shut it down before we start to really get ignition here. We already have ignition and I just switch off to prevent that. Right, to switch off the system is very simple. You just go down to, this is your, your, your throttle position. If you see we have the bar on the outside, so that is maximum throttle. That is uh, idle speed. So if you're on maximum throttle, um, you just, uh, good practice just to come down to idle for the engine, just to cool down for a while. And then you just move the stick, the switch, the master switch or the main operating switch into the retracted position. So once it's cooled down, it will automatically retract and start the engine. So very simple process to follow. It takes about 45 seconds for the engine to start up from the moment you, you switch power on. But if you take into account that the rate in descent is not increasing at all, so you're still just descending at 0.6 meters per second, it's just about 30 meters or 27 meters of altitude loss to start an engine in stall air. Very, very comfortable, easy system with very little weight. The jet system only weighs uh, 17 kilograms without fuel. So if you decide in a competition that you don't want to fly heavy and you can actually fly without fuel, it's only 17 kilograms of penalty you pay. And um, this uh, J3 is, uh, uh, has a capacity of another 17 kilograms of fuel. So it's about 34 kilograms of fuel, which gives you a range of 150 kilometers with a one single um, dolphin climb. So we think this is a, a real, real nice sustainer system, especially for the contest pilot who doesn't want to carry extra weight with him in flight. If we just look at some of the nice features that we have uh, introduced in the JS3, one is uh, mainly basically the flap. The flap is an extremely light flap. In flight you can operate it with two fingers, it's as light as this to operate. Um, it doesn't get much heavier, even at high speeds the flap is so, so easy to operate. So we have five or six positions here. One is uh, the speed above 200 kilometers an hour. Flap two is our long range flap, which uh, allows you to fly between 130 and 200 kilometers. So most of the time our com competitors only have to fly in flap two. Then we have flap three, which is just your best LOD flap setting, or which is defined as neutral flap. So if you're really in trouble and you would like to extend your, your, your glide to have a glide ratio um, exceeding 55, you're going to flap three with about a speed of 120 kilometers an hour. And then you have your two climbing settings, the flap four and flap five. So normally flap four is very, works very well in turbulent conditions where you do a bit of centering required and advance it to flap five once you've centered and there's no more, much more um, centering and changing and uh, quite a smooth thermal works for, uh, for flap five as well. And then we have a landing flap here, which uh, just uh, reduced the, the stall speed that last little bit to meet uh, the stall speed certification requirements. Um, I normally don't land in landing flap, I just use flap four or five, but landing flap is also a, a, a possibility. It's got extremely powerful air brakes, so the air brakes uh, allows you really to, to make descents at maximum weight of um, 
close to 50 meters per second. Very, very strong and powerful air brakes. And the feature that we've introduced here is that you can lock it in a, in a setting. So if you if you come down and you lock it in the flap one setting, this is just about 10% of flap, you can actually move your hand to the flap setting if, if changes are required. Or in case you forgot your landing gear and you have to have an extra hand available, it is uh, quite nice to, to be able to lock it in a, in a specific position you have a hand free available. Should you should the emergency develop that you need uh, an, another hand available. This is a feature that we developed in uh, the, the hand control system for paraplegic pilots and once we've flown with it we realize this is a must for all aircraft. So it's quite nice. Then also it's uh, equipped with a park brake. So sometimes if you just pull the brake back and you lock the pin into that locking position then. Oh you have to cut this part. Okay now the park brake is on. That's quite rough adjusted and if you just pull the brake it releases again. So that allows you if you if you have outlanded on a slope or something and you want to run backwards or something you can or, or, or if you're in a, in a slopey runway you can you can leave the park brake also on. This one is a little sort of do a little bit of run in um, but it is quite a neat feature that's normally not available. And if you look into the, the economic system so we have um, electric buck wipers here let's just see if that is not directed to the correct battery so we have the left and the right buck wiper here Okay, which has uh, both uh, automatic and manual modes. We also have the electric or rudder pedal adjustment. If you, if you see there, you just switch the seat forward and back to set your rudder pedals, which um, is quite, quite nice because you have uh, an indefinite number of positions where you can set it to. And um, those are the basic features with inside the JST. We also insta installed um, a, a made provision for for uh, feet heating in cold conditions. So there's an electrical switch where you can feed your 12 watts directly to it. You can switch this on and off in flight. And um, this is um, basically the, the, the layout of the cockpit. Very simple, clean configuration. And um, the feedback that we have is that most pilots are fitting in it. We designed it for a pilot of 196 meters, 1.96 and um, 120 kilograms. Although we only have certified at this moment for 115 kilograms. A pilot with 120 kilograms fits into the cockpit. So, with possible um, reinforcement modification changes, we can accommodate heavier pilots in 115. And they fit. They fit. Uh, we have not so far had any customer that does not fit in our cockpit. So, if you're a large guy, come and try it out and you'll find a comfortable sitting position. So, that's the JS3.